Are you prepared for what's happening right now, fellow Americans? Just announced, five critical food shortages are hitting our nation as we speak. This isn't just another headline. It's a wake-up call for every one of us who believes in being prepared. Across the United States, from the bustling cities to the quietest rural areas, we're witnessing shortages that could affect our daily lives in ways we haven't seen before. But what does this mean for you, the fellow prepper, the one who's always one step ahead? It means it's time to double down on our efforts, to reassess our strategies, and ensure we're ready for what's to come. Let's talk specifics. 1. Eggs. It's quite the scramble out there with eggs becoming a bit of a luxury item in some places. From what's been shared, it's not just a small hiccup, but a widespread issue affecting folks from the U.S. to the U.K. In the U.S., there's talk about the green agenda possibly playing a role in making eggs more expensive and harder to find. It's like eggs are not just breakfast staples, they're also crucial for a bunch of recipes. So, when eggs get pricey or scarce, it's not just your morning omelet that's at stake, it's a whole lot of cooking plans going awry. Then, hopping across the pond to the UK, it seems the situation isn't any sunnier. Prices have shot up, and shelves that used to be stocked with cartons of eggs are looking pretty barren. It's mentioned that even in places like Aldi, the price of green tea, which, okay, isn't an egg but stick with me, doubled hinting at how widespread the issue is, affecting not just eggs, but a whole range of groceries. But, back to eggs, the scarcity is real, and folks are feeling the pinch. And it's not just about having to pay more or hunt around different stores. It's the bigger picture stuff. Like, why are eggs becoming so hard to get? Is it weather-related supply chain hiccups or something else? Whatever it is, it's causing a bit of a stir, with food banks seeing more people coming in. It's a reminder of how connected everything is. From farm to table, every step matters. So, whether you're in the U.S. dealing with these egg-normous price hikes and shortages, or in the U.K. staring at empty shelves where eggs used to be, it's clear this is a global omelet of issues. And it's not just about missing out on your favorite breakfast. It's a sign of larger challenges that need cracking. 2. Tea Shortage both in North Carolina and across the pond in the UK. It's quite the brew, if you ask me. Starting off in North Carolina, it seems like tea lovers are facing a bit of a conundrum. The shelves that usually host a variety of teas are looking a bit bare, especially in the green tea department. Imagine walking into your local store, craving that soothing cup of green tea, only to find the section looking like a ghost town. It's not just any tea we're talking about, it's green tea a staple for many seeking its health benefits and comforting warmth. The scarcity is real, and it's making its presence felt, leaving tea enthusiasts scratching their heads and wondering where all the tea has gone. Hopping over to the UK, the situation seems to brew a similar story, but with a bit of a twist. Green tea prices have shot up, doubling no less. Picture this. You're used to grabbing your favorite green tea at a cozy price of 69p for 40 bags, a deal that would make anyone's day. But now that price has leaped to a steep climb, and the usual brand is playing a game of hide-and-seek, missing in action for weeks. When it finally reappears, it's like it's come back wearing a fancy new price tag, making you do a double-take. And let's not forget the eggs and olive oil joining the bandwagon of the price hike and scarcity in the UK. It's like a domino effect over there with one item after another getting harder to find or afford. So whether you're in North Carolina or the UK, it seems the quest for that perfect cup of tea has become a bit more challenging. It's a reminder of how something as simple as tea can become a luxury when shortages hit. Tea lovers might need to start getting creative, maybe even considering a tea swap or hunting down alternative sources for their beloved brew. Who knew that our tea drinking habits would be steeped in such adventure, right? Three produce and salad items. So, what's the deal with produce and salad items in the U.S., you ask? Well, let me tell you, it's been a bit of a wild ride lately. From what's been shared, it looks like there's been a noticeable dip in the availability of these fresh goods. And it's not just a small blip on the radar. First off, let's talk about the situation in California and Florida. These states are like the breadbasket, or should I say the salad bowl, for a lot of our fruits and veggies. But they've been hit hard with some heavy flooding, this isn't just a little puddle here and there. We're talking about the kind of waterworks that can really disrupt the growing and distribution of produce. So, if you've been noticing fewer greens and fruits on your grocery store shelves, this is a big part of the reason why. Now, 
onto the food banks and pantries across the United States. They've been feeling the squeeze, too. With the uptick in demand, it's been tougher to keep those shelves stocked with nutritious options like fresh produce and salad items. It's a bit of a double whammy. Not only are there fewer goods available, but more people are in need. It's a tough situation all around. And let's not forget about the folks who've shared their first-hand experiences. Like the person from Raleigh, North Carolina, who noticed that the produce section, especially where the salad stuff should be, was looking pretty empty. It's not just an isolated incident, it's a trend that's popping up in various parts of the country. Even Whole Foods, known for its abundance of organic and fresh options, is having to do some fancy footwork, aka fronting, to make the shelves look fuller than they actually are. So, what's the game plan? Well, it might be a good time to get creative with those pantry staples or explore some of the frozen options. Not quite the same as fresh, but hey, we've got to roll with the punches, right? And who knows? This could be the perfect opportunity to try out that root vegetable recipe you've been eyeing. Turnips and parsnips might just become the new stars of your dinner table. 4. Meat shortage at Sam's Club. Ever found yourself wandering the aisles of your local Sam's Club only to discover the meat section looking a little lonely? Yeah, it's happening, and not just in one place. Over in North Georgia, a viewer shared that their Sam's Club was practically a meat desert. The coolers, while humming away, were starkly empty except for a few high-priced organic steaks and some pork hiding in the back. Even the produce wasn't spared, with lettuce and grapes sporting more brown spots than a Dalmatian. Not exactly what you're hoping to find when you're trying to stock up for the week, right? So, what's a savvy shopper to do when faced with these shortages? First off, don't panic. It's easy to get frustrated, but there are strategies to navigate these lean times. You definitely don't want to end up with an empty fridge, right? Well, a little bit of strategic stockpiling can really make a difference. But, and this is a big but, we're not talking about going out and clearing the shelves in one go. That's not cool, and honestly, it doesn't help anyone. What you want to do is build up a sensible reserve over time. Focus on meats, since they freeze well and are super versatile in your cooking. Now, how much should you stockpile? A good rule of thumb is to aim for a two to three week supply for your household. This keeps you prepared without hogging all your freezer space or leading to waste. And of course, adjust this based on how much storage you've got and the size of your family. If you're lucky enough to have a chest freezer, you might lean towards the higher end of that range. But if space is tight, you'll need to be a bit more conservative. Let's talk about what meats to go for. You want a variety, something that'll last well when frozen and fits into your meal plans. Chicken breasts or thighs are a great start. They're versatile and freeze like a dream. Aim for about 10-15 pounds, depending on your needs and space. Ground beef or turkey is another winner for quick meals like spaghetti or tacos. Again, 10-15 pounds is a good target, packaged in one-pound portions to make life easier. Pork chops or tenderloin are fantastic too, freezing beautifully and giving you plenty of meal options. About 5-10 pounds should do it. And don't forget about beef roasts or stew meat for those slow-cooked wonders. A similar amount is perfect. Lastly, a bit of bacon and sausages can add a lot of flavors to your dishes, even if they're not the healthiest. Just a few pounds of each can spice up your meals. Now, for some tips on stockpiling. Always buy on sale if you can. Keep an eye out for deals at your local stores or maybe get a membership at a wholesale club. Proper storage is key, so invest in quality freezer bags or a vacuum sealer. This will protect your meat from freezer burn and keep it good for longer. And label everything with the purchase date and type of meat. It helps you use the oldest items first and cuts down on waste. Most importantly, be mindful of others. Only buy what you realistically need and will use. This way there's enough to go around and it reduces waste. 5. Frozen food shortages at Dollar General stores. Are you finding the frozen food aisles a bit bare at your local Dollar General? You're not alone. And here's the scoop on what's happening and how you can navigate these chilly challenges. The word on the street, or more accurately from a refrigeration tech in Oklahoma and southern Arkansas, is that Dollar General stores are facing a real freeze when it comes to stocking their frozen food sections. It's not just a matter of a few missing ice cream tubs. We're talking significant shortages across the board. And if you're thinking, well, let's just fix whatever's broken, hold that thought. The tech mentioned a jaw-dropping six-month lead time for parts needed for repairs. 
Imagine waiting half a year just to get the freezer humming again. I know many of you, like me, have been hitting up Dollar General for those frozen goodies. But it's time we talk about spreading our wings a bit. There are so many other places out there waiting for us to explore. Think about your local supermarkets, discount stores, or hey, even farmers markets might have some frozen produce you've never tried before. Who knows, you might stumble upon some amazing deals and new favorites. Now with the way things are going, planning ahead is more important than ever. When you do come across a good stash of frozen foods, consider buying a bit more than usual. But let's be mindful of our freezer space, right? And if you're up for it, preserving fresh produce by freezing, canning, or drying can be a real game changer. It's not only fun, but think about the satisfaction of having your own stockpile when the pickings get slim. Here's what you should consider grabbing on your next shopping trip. How much you might need, and why these choices matter. First up, vegetables and fruits. You can't go wrong with a variety of veggies like broccoli, spinach, peas, and mixed vegetables. And for fruits, berries, mango chunks, and mixed fruit bags are fantastic. How much should you get? Well, a couple of bags of each type should do, depending on how much freezer space you have. Aim for one. Two bags per person each month adjusting based on what you actually eat. These are nutrient powerhouses and can be tossed into so many dishes. Plus, they're pre-washed and cut, saving you precious time and effort. Now let's talk proteins. Chicken breasts, fish fillets like salmon or tilapia, and for those who are vegetarian or vegan, don't overlook plant-based options like veggie burgers or meat substitutes. A good starting point is two, four pounds of each protein per person. This should last you a month or more, depending on your meal plans. Proteins are key to a balanced diet, and having a variety on hand means you're ready to whip up different meals without constant trips to the store. Ready meals are next on the list. Yes, they're super convenient, but try to pick a mix of your favorites and lean towards the healthier options when you can. Think lasagna, stir-fry mixes, and bowls filled with whole grains and veggies. Limit these due to their higher sodium and preservative content. But having five, 10 meals per person can be a lifesaver for those hectic days or when you just can't face cooking. Don't forget about breads and grains. Whole grain bread, tortillas, bagels, and even frozen rice or quinoa blends are great to have on hand. Stock up with two, three packages of each, depending on how quickly you go through them. These items can last for months and are perfect for quick sandwiches, wraps, or as sides. Dairy and eggs are also freezer friendly. Some cheeses, butter, and even milk can be frozen and you'll find frozen egg products that are perfect for baking or scrambled eggs. How much to keep? About one, two months supply, depending on how much you use. Just remember, dairy products can be bulky, so consider your freezer space. A few general tips to keep in mind. Assess your needs based on your household size, dietary restrictions, and eating habits. Buy what you'll realistically eat to avoid waste, and manage your freezer space wisely to keep track of what you have. The goal here isn't to stockpile for the sake of it. It's about ensuring you have a well-rounded selection of foods that meet your nutritional needs and preferences. Adjust quantities based on your specific situation and always be mindful of expiration dates and optimal freezer storage practices to make the most of your purchases. With that, we've reached the end of today's video. And as always, thank you for watching, folks. Until next time, stay safe.